Hello everyone and welcome back to more Let's Play Jade Cocoon 2. My name is Rabbit and as promised I managed to acquire all of the cute gems necessary to complete this job off camera. So let's go ahead and hand those bad boys over and see if we can immediately pick up another. What is it? Oh, the job kit. I finally finished that job. I see. I've been waiting. Well, here's the reward I promised. <gasps> All right, and there we go, guys. We got a rare egg called a rain drag, and we'll check this bad boy out in just one moment. I want to immediately come over here and see. Oh my god, I am a genius. Okay, so when I was going through the the water forest, I ended up picking up a bunch of Mel's elixirs because or Mel's elixirs, Mel's liquors, as well as some twill mugworts because I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna start collecting a bunch of stuff, especially when I'm at those high tier parts or the high tier islands of these elemental forests, because it looks like we're getting to a point now where collecting these things and handing them over will get us either a lot of yen or some cool items. So this one, let's see, they want five, the Mao guy, and he also wants five. I may honestly have 10, so I might be able to complete both of these, but first let's see. This one, oh, he's the one who still needs 14, 12 mugworts, and I only have like six of those. I didn't find too many, um, so okay. Just to double check before I run, get me five for 4,000. These might be the same job, actually. Get me five for 4,000. Okay, so it looks like they are the same job, just by different people. So let me run back. I think I have enough in my storage. <laughs> Oops, why did I click lounge? I meant to click Kiki Mac and Company. So nothing very special happened off camera, aside from the fact that I did end up running through Water Shade, I think is the fourth. Uh, level. I ended up running through that a lot and as you can see here are some of the items that I had dropped off. Oh no, I might only have enough. Oh, I have seven. I don't have. Oh, well that kind of sucks. I thought I had more than that, but I guess not. Well, that's fine. So let's hand over. I might have grabbed one too many, but that's okay. God, why am I clicking like <laughs> the wrong ones? Lounge, Kiki Neck and Company. I just am getting you two mixed up, aren't I? All right, well, let's finish this job and maybe there will be something that only needs like five or six to a mug Finished it? I did. Of course, per. I thought it'd take a look. Here's your reward. I know, I know. You're not very nice. I, I wish they would give them at least two different ways of thanking us once we finish their job for the specific people. Okay, so. Oh my god, it's gonna take forever to get 14 of those. I'm surprised these are considered the same class in terms of the reputation level you must have or the reputation points you need to have because getting five Mel's liquors, that's significantly easier than getting 14 Twill Mugworts. I'm just saying. So I actually might go ahead and pick this one up because this one will be easier for us to fulfill and it's not like we need the money but as we've seen, doing these is a pretty good idea. So, all right, I'm just going to go back to Kiki Mac and Company. I almost clicked lounge as you saw there. One last time just to drop some shit off. Then we're going to head to the Room of Life, hatch our new egg, and I'm going to show you the amulet that I was working with when I was running through Watershade. It's not anything very special. Oh, I guess I have an extra cute gem now, don't I? I'll probably just go ahead and sell that. Oh, and as you can see, I have a fuck ton of Resurrect books now. So that's no joke. So what was I here to drop off? Oh, I th thought I had an extra, I guess I did pull out exactly as many as I needed. For some reason I thought I had an extra Mel's Elixir, but I guess I'm just flipping through this too quickly. Okay, but I think otherwise we are good. I'm gonna leave the Twill Mugworts here. The Mel's Elixirs can chill. Um, and just one last peek. I think I'll take all my Tendai herbs with me. I'll take my Calabas herbs. I'll just go ahead and sell this cute gem or maybe, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I think we're good, so. We have plenty of room and if we're going back to the wind forest anyway, I wanna have some fodder for merging, so it's not that imperative that I completely empty my backpack here. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about seeing this water coup. Here we go, here we go. The rain jack. 
guys. I can't believe it. It's been a while since we've gotten a rare egg from a job, I think. Right? It feels like it's been a while to me. Oh, it's blue. Oh my gosh. I guess that's why it's called a rain drake. Oh my gosh, it's so interesting. Its mouth is like dark blue, but then the rest of it is a lavender periwinkle sort of blend. And as you guys are well aware, lavender as well as periwinkle are tied for my two number one favorite colors. So that is really cool. I kind of want to use this right now, actually. Uh, what are we going to name her? It's blue and it's so cute. I have to name her something, you guys. Let's name her... How about... How about... Let's name her... Ciara. <laughs> For the C and then to mix with Sierra. There we go. So Ciara, welcome to the family, you blue beauty. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, so... Just so we're not spending too much time here opening up at the temple, I want to quickly show you my amulet. And yes, there are some people that are ready to be merged, but as always, you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I don't know which direction I should really go in. I decided since I was doing the off-camera grinding to find those cute gems, and it actually did take me two full runs through Watershade. I didn't start at the very first water area. What is it, Water Visit? Is that the level one? I can't even remember. But I started in whatever was right before the level four one, so the level three, I guess, and I ran through that, and then the level four forest, and then I went back only through the level four forest. So technically, I guess you could say I went through three layers of the water forest to get all of the cute gems that I needed and the items that I had stored, which wasn't necessary, I guess, but I just, I don't know, I just felt like covering my tracks and making sure I didn't miss any comma prior to that final section of Watershade. But anyway, I'm sure you guys don't give a shit about my actual backtracking. So the reason why I ended up assembling a different party was just to, you know, experiment with more combinations and with more abilities. So for the very first time, I was messing around with Ad Roca, which is the petrification spell. And I like it okay. Um, this is Prissy Pants. She is a Tomatok, I believe. So it's the yellow talk. And I actually ended up hatching, I think, a second one of these Tama Talks because I had two talks and two comma talks. And I figured, let me just go ahead and have two Tama Talks as well. So I hatched one and I named him Captain, and he's just chilling in my beast kennel. And then, if you guys recall from two, three, maybe four videos ago, when I was looking through the beast notebook, we saw that I believe it's the Gera Luke line. I think that's what it is. It's one of the Augs. Uh, the one that I had is named Belinda because I had given her Imago later on. We ended up skipping a middle merge stage. So I ended up just hatching a second, I think it's called Garaluke, and I named that one Bernie. And I might have mentioned that to you guys before, but if not, whatever. So okay, anyway, that's all I guess a recap in terms of any extra hatchlings that I made. So in terms of just what this lineup looks like. This is Prissy Pants in terms of her attacks and abilities. So just add Roka. She's not really that powerful, but that's okay because my intention wasn't to get someone powerful so much as it was just to experiment with someone, someone new. Uh, Walter is finally level 15, so he is ready to be merged. And I actually think I'm going to wait until he gets to level 20, which I know sounds crazy because I've been wanting to work with Walter for a really long time, but I already have Al and he's using Meta Knight. And since Al is not yet at level 15, I can't upgrade his wind ability. So it would be a waste in my opinion to go ahead and give Walter Meta Knight when Al already has it. So I'm just going to wait and we'll adjust these two later on. Emil is still the same, nothing new or special to say about him. So I added another Mao. Uh, so this one started out as the comma talk. It is called a hee ha ha. And I have to say this is again one of those incredibly hideous divine beast designs. We've seen one of these before and I also expressed that I hated it at that time. So my sentiment hasn't changed. I feel like this one is arguably worse than the little airplane slash helicopter one, whatever Krusty is called. I just feel like it's so ridiculous. I don't know, it kind of breaks my immersion and I, I don't know, I really hate this Divine Beast design, but it's 
I guess, second form or its second evolution was actually kind of cute. And I'll show you in the Beast Notebook for those of you who want me to be keeping track of all of that and sharing all of that with you. So I'm doing my best to do that. I know a few of you expressed great interest in me sharing that kind of stuff. So next we have Tacy, who is a Pata Drek and she is sporting Agnite as well as Olvi Luna. So she's one that we haven't used at all, but I had been making sure to keep her merged and kind of upgraded in my Beast Kennel, and I decided I'm going to bring her out, not necessarily because the abilities that she has, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't call them abilities, these are abilities, but it's not because necessarily that her attacks are that unique or valuable so much as I just wanted to try using something else. And we have not yet used this specific coup subspecies, if you want to call it that. And then I decided to put Jace back here in place of, I think it was called Doobie, was that fire bug insect critter who also had Desperado hit but was constantly dying. So Jace is much better. He's a bit bulkier and I, I don't know. I just have been enjoying having him here more. He's level 16 so he is technically ready to be merged but I kind of like my setup right now at least in terms of having an open spot between the wind and fire side. So I don't know if it's within my best interest to go ahead and merge Jace up to the next fire attack or if I should give him a secondary element ability. So just in case he ever went on a corner, he could have something just to make it more varied and give me more options with a lineup that I take into a forest. So anyway, that's what I'm working with right now. So I'm going to, well, I was going to say I'm going to pause the camera and run back into the wind forest, but I wonder if anyone here is at level 20 for me to merge so let's just check that together really fast i'm not going to be merging anyone who's in my party quite yet as i've already expressed and it looks like nobody's at 20 oh my god except for okay so here was captain which is what i was talking about and then here's bernie who i also just mentioned so bernie is a, a duplicate just to replace, I guess, technically Belinda. She's still here. I haven't released or deleted any Divine Beast since we started this game. By the way, we're at like 59 hours and 30 minutes, which is absolutely ridiculous, I just want to say. But anyway, I haven't dropped anyone. I just wanted to make sure I can fill up that slot in my Beast notebook. So that was totally my motivation for going and hatching another one. Of is this called a Gera look? Okay, I was remembering that correctly. Okay, so here was Captain and then these other guys. So I have four that I need to merge. So I guess before I do that, let me show you in the Beast you. Notebook. I'm sorry I had been so rubbish in previous episodes about Risky. doing that. I've definitely heard some of your requests for me to show more of these as they fill up. So I'm trying to do that. I got at least three pre, or not pre, <laughs> PMs, I was going to say emails and then private messages, which became preem. So I got a lot of emails and private messages where you guys are saying, you know, please show us the Beast Notebook as you are hatching new things so we can see sort of the intermediate evolution since sometimes you guys come back and they've already gone up to the third one. Okay, so there's nothing really special to see here with from the Drek to the Pata Drek. The third evolution has not yet been unlocked, so that's all that you guys didn't see. So here's coming back to what I was saying with the Gera looks. So Belinda is the Wanchu, and hopefully with Bernie, I'll be able to unlock this one right here. And then Mao's. Okay, so now you guys can see all of those. So that's what Buddy looked like, and then he turned into that, and then that. So here you go. Hee Haw, which I think is kind of cute, right? Like, I don't know why they went from this to this. I think they could have still had it where it looks like it's giggling, but its head completely coming off of its body, really? I don't know, I'm I'm not feeling that at all. I think this one's nice, but I'm, I don't like this form at all. And then here's the talk. I actually really like this one a lot. It looks almost like elegant and cute. And then it turns into this, which is what Chrissy Pants presently is looking like. So I can't wait actually to use the new Mal that we had unlocked. I still need to go and get another one of these drags. I can't believe I'm missing the yellow one and that Maisie is a special one. So yes, anyway, 
there you go. Again, I apologize for the three-ish people who have been asking me to constantly update you with Beast Notebook stuff. I promise I'll try to do that whenever there are any changes as I have just now done. So I hope this was good for you. So as I already mentioned, I'm going to pause, do some merging, and then when we come back, we will just be in the wind forest. Hopefully we'll be able to pick up a few more Mel's elixirs because I think that's the job we have right now, yes? Okay, yeah, and I have two of them in storage, so we only need to find three more. So I will make sure that I take care of that. So be right back, everyone. Okie dokie, guys, welcome back. So I'm here in Wind Patina 2, and not too much actually happened off camera between where you guys parted from me and where we are right now with me bringing you back. So I'm just going to quickly run through some of the things that did happen. So the first order of business in Wind Patina 1, I did have a little cutscene with Yamu and Gil. Again, it was just one of those little random, somewhat nonsensical cutscenes where we didn't talk about anything that important. And so basically, Yamu was saying, oh, you know, Tailman, which is what he was calling Kahu, give me some something shiny, give me something, give me money. Basically, he was just wanting Kahu to give him shit and that's kind of interesting because in Jade Cocoon's story of the Tamamayu if I remember correctly all of those little creatures were kind of greedy and liked getting gifts and liked getting things so I guess in a way it was sort of making a reference back to how Yamu and Mamon and all of those creatures had been presented in the previous version of this game so anyway I digress we entered the ogre vine and Yamu was like, gimme, 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 tail man, I want something, give me something. And Nico kind of was just saying, wow, it's kind of weird how these spirits and descendants of something great end up not being what you would expect them to be. Like, this is not anything that I would consider to be a great divine spirit. So in a way, she was insulting Yamu, saying he was very basic, which he is. So I gotta say, I actually agreed with Nico for once. And then Gil kind of chimed in and was saying that, well, you know, the things that you hear in Legends, they may not actually be what the beings were like in real life. So it was a really short cut scene and not even as interesting as I'm trying to make it now. If what I was just saying for the last minute, if that was even interesting, which it probably was not. So yeah, there you go. Had a quick little somewhat bullshit cut scene. Then I did, of course, because we are in the wind forest, BT dubs, excuse what a shit show and mess my backpack is, but I did get a speed extract here in wind patina two from fighting one of those, I don't even know what they're actually called, but they're what Krusty would grow into, the little helicopter airplane things. So I'm actually going to give this to Emil. I have been trying my best to get him to get Mantle off first and then watch by the time he has a high enough speed for that to be a viable strategy. I'm not even gonna have Mantle on him anymore. So I don't know what I'm even doing with this or my life, but there we go. Enjoy your speed extract and increase by one. So in regards to mixing, um, well, I haven't done anything with the Mecklecock. I literally just picked it up in the Ogre Vine prior to bringing you guys back. But I did get two new ones, or I know for sure this one's new. I've never seen Whiskerack. And actually, at first, I was thinking this would be a Mao, but of course, the Ock ending usually is associated with Geras, which this turns out to be. So it is Egg of a Whiskerack, a Gera Divine Beast. So, you know, that's cool. I'm always excited to get brand new eggs. And then we got a death loop, which I don't recall us getting this. So I think this one's new. I'm like 50-50 on this bad boy. So we'll see if it's new or not when we go back to the temple. And then I'll be doing some merging with the Mecklecock and we'll see if I can get anything new from there. And then yeah, I just have a bunch of random shit that I've been picking up and trying to use along the way. I did get another Mel's Elixir 7, which is good. And I have another Twill Mugwort, which is also good. So let us continue for another couple of minutes. I know we're kind of close to being up on time. So this is going to be a very strange episode <laughs> where we spent a lot of time just doing random things, but you know, that is okay. So it makes it such that in our next episode, we absolutely should be finishing this forest and getting that stupid orb. Oh my God, and now I'm getting another egg. <laughs> Look at this. Not that I feel like I need another egg, but at least you guys will get to see my party. Oh, the other thing I meant to mention, I'm so sorry, you guys. <laughs> and I was saying, oh, you know, nothing really too great happened. Just a cut scene, some new eggs, a speed extract. And Al ended up hitting his fourth 
evolutionary form. So as you can see, he's kind of like a fat larval moth thing. He reminds me of Volcarona, actually, from Pokemon. For those of you that know what Volcarona is, Volcarona is a little bit cuter than Owl is looking, but that's what it reminds me of. And in a way, I think, so this is something I had hypothesized in a previous episode that when the divine beast hit their final form or their fourth evolutionary form, I think that they are the, the same design as monsters we've encountered. Or not monsters, bosses that we've encountered. So I think this form was one that we have seen before as a boss. But, you know, I don't remember 100%. But this one looks very much like a boss that I believe we have run into together. And then, obviously, what Chachi turned into was a boss that we had fought before. So that's kind of my, my little, my guess there. But it's interesting because I don't think we've seen many of the fourth form Divine Beasts quite yet. I think Chachi and now Al are the only two that we fully evolved. But I mean, that's still progress. I'm happy with that. But I'm just saying like, obviously I don't know for sure if the fourth forms are what we have seen in our bosses yet because I only have two to compare it to. But we'll see, I am just trying to get rid of these monsters. I don't know why they mess with the ones that are petrified because they turn to stone and then they do not cause you any more trouble. Like, look, there he goes. He's frozen and now he's not going to fuck with us. But watch, they'll probably target him first instead of the one that's alive. <gasps> oh no, they didn't let me down. Well, not yet. Okay, there we go. And now it doesn't really matter. So let's just finish him. I kind of wish the game would just consider that a death when they become petrified. I guess I can see why it doesn't, because if you're fighting a beast hunter or fighting someone else, they should be able to use an item to remove paralysis. But if you're fighting a random wild minion or divine beast and they get put into uh, paralysis, I feel like that should be game over, like for them. And it should just count it as a death so that I don't have to go back and actually kill it okay i'm just gonna open up a little bit more of this map and we will look into oh my gosh you guys this is going to be another one of those expansive ones i guess it should be because it's the last one before we get to the island with the boss so i guess i shouldn't expect much more than that but in a way it still kind of drives me oh goodness okay we'll just leave this alone let's run back to where we left off and then we will go ahead and part ways so i apologize this episode has been kind of weird <laughs> oh no you see that motherfucker sleeping over there actually let's just run in here maybe it's safe <gasps> actually we'll end the episode with this comma is always nice and i hope this is the fucking sleep at slanit i think is what it's called it's the it's the comma i've been waiting for forever that's why we don't have fizzy there he is go jets and that is what we have been wanting okay this is a great way to end the episode all right now i don't feel quite as bad okay really all right let's see if emil can knock the shit out of him and keep him from using that stupid ability well but there's only one so it's not a huge deal but it still drives me nuts absolutely nuts okay i know go jet oh you're fucked now go jet all right well let's just see okay perfect he woke up al so oh no or was al already woken up i'm like looking over there at prissy pants i think al just woke up okay perfect so we got some heels off and now i'll go to my fire side and they should be able to kill him jace is a freaking powerhouse and he should be dead rest in peace no oh you resilient motherfucker well we might as well let this last side get some xp right and you get to see everyone in action i know this is a very weird formation i told you guys it was totally experimental and meant for my off-camera excursion in our last episode but i decided to just keep it on for a little bit why not it's not terabad so i figured 
I'm not going to sweat it too much, but okay. Anyway, so we grabbed GoJet, which makes me a happy camper. Again, I apologize that this was kind of a weird episode. We spent quite a bit of time, I feel like, discussing the actual divine beasts and their evolutionary lines and looking at the beast notebook, and it just wasn't that exciting. So I guess this is an episode of notebook necessities, if you will, and divine beast evolutionary line necessities. But when we come back in our next video, we will definitely be continuing the story. We'll have hopefully meaningful cutscenes since when Patina 3 is new to both of us. And we should be able to get through this entire island and hopefully get the wind orb, if not by the end of our next episode, by the beginning of the episode following that. So anyway, Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. As always, I'm your host, Rabbit. This is my Let's Play of Jade Cocoon 2, and I will see you very shortly, my loves.